Welcome into another episode of Locked On Phillies. And folks, it's all over in the National League East. The Phillies, for the first time in 13 years, are division champs. We celebrate on today's episode of Locked On Phillies. You are Locked On Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is Locked On Phillies. I'm your host, Connor Thomas. Thank you so much for joining us on this very special day for the Phillies and Phillies fans. Uh, please make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube here on Locked On Phillies. That stuff really helps us out. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You may know me for some of my other work in the sports talk space uh, over at 97.5 The Fanatic on the radio. Uh, three years as a credentialed Philadelphia Phillies media member, and this is my third year as the host of Locked on Phillies. Today's episode is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking.com, Booking. Yeah, the right stay can make you a fan of any city, even your baseball rivals. Book today on Booking.com, the official accommodation partner of Major League Baseball. Get the Booking.com app today as well. Ah, uh, folks, they finally did it. The long, long drought is over the philadelphia phillies are national league east division champions it's been 13 darn years since the phillies have been able to say that the braves have had a stranglehold on this division for the past what six and 2011 was the last time the phillies could claim that they won their division that's crazy i was a junior in high school in 2011 I don't think I could drive a car back then. It's been a long, long time. I saw the video of some guy saying he got married, divorced, had kids, got married again, all between the last time the Phillies won the division and last night, the most recent time they've locked up the NL East. That's why I've got the uh, the goggles on my head just in case any extra champagne comes flying around. The victory shirt is on. If you're not watching on YouTube, of course it's on. Come on. How could I not be wearing the victory shirt on a day like today? It's just, it's been such a long time and it might not feel to some people. I'm, I'm fighting this feeling myself, right? It might not feel like as big of a deal as it should because the Phillies went to the World Series two years ago. They went to the NLCS last year. They have come very close to summiting the mountaintop in October, and you realize with October's success how much a division title could feel like a consolation prize if things don't go the Phillies' way. But at the same time, it's just – it's a testament to the talent and the perseverance of this team. It's incredible to see them do that. A 6-2 win over the Cubs last night, by the way. Schwarber goes yard. Romuto goes yard. Aaron Nola goes six innings, two earned. A strong start by him. It was just a good, complete game by the Philadelphia Phillies where they took it to a team that has nothing to play for and locked up the division as they should. I just I can't say enough about this team in the regular season. They've overcome – this is going to sound rich to some teams in baseball saying the Phillies have overcome injuries because they haven't lost anybody for the season or anything like that. But there are points in the season where they played without Turner and Harper and Schwarber and JT and Bohm and all of these guys and depth pieces and Ranger Suarez and Taiwan Walker. And you go to the bullpen, you've had guys up and down all year. And it's just like, OK, and you're not losing guys for the season, but people have to step up. The depth pieces were huge for the Phillies this year. Edmundo Sosa was awesome. Uh, you look at the outfield, Weston Wilson had big moments. Uh, Cal Stevenson had big moments. Buddy Kennedy. How could I forget Cody Clements? Uh, Raphael Marchand came up when JT went down and did his best along with Garrett Stubbs to keep this team afloat. Uh, they just, they're the picture of consistency in the division this year, and that's why they're division champions. I know they had that slump, but Compared to all the other teams in the National League East, nobody has done it better over nearly 162 games than the Philadelphia Phillies. And there's more still to go for, right? We're going to talk a little bit later on in the episode about how to handle things going forward, the hangover game today, which should be awesome. But this is just a celebration of a show, talking about how special this Philadelphia Phillies baseball team is. I mean, just think about it, man. Like – 13 years between division titles. Could you imagine that happening with, like, for example, the Philadelphia Eagles, 13 years without winning the NFC East? This city would burn to the ground. 
But for the Philadelphia Phillies, that's been reality. And I know the accomplishments recently in the postseason, like I was saying earlier, might make it seem like it's a consolation prize. But, folks, it is not. It's not the ultimate goal, but this is not something to just be thrown away. I was popping the champagne last night. I had the goggles on uh, up on the roof of my building. I was celebrating, and some people might think, oh, that's silly. Or what does this guy think he's on the team? Well, one, I like to just celebrate things. I don't think I'm a member of the Philadelphia Phillies, but – what, I can't have a drink? The last time the Phillies won the NL East, I was not old enough to take a legal drink. That was my first alcoholic beverage since the Philadelphia Phillies, uh, like with the Philadelphia Phillies as NL East champions in my lifetime. It's been forever, folks. I will keep laying that point uh, down. So, so it's very, very clear that this is a rare occurrence when you look at the history. I believe it's their 12th division title in franchise history. So, yeah, uh, they they need to add to that. And they did this year, and hopefully they'll continue to do that, and hopefully this core generally is here for a long time. But anyone who looks at this division says, well, the Nationals kind of aren't that good, and the Marlins stink and traded everybody at the deadline, and the Mets came on late, but they were bad to start the season, and the Braves are so injured, and, and look at it and say, oh, well, that's it's not that big of an accomplish, accomplishment because they should have won the East with everything that happened to other teams. Forget that. Do you know how hard it is to win a division? Like, you don't think there's other years in the past 13 where other teams have had injuries or have had bad stretches or have just, I don't know, not been good. Like, and yet the Phillies still had not been able to summit that mountain. Now they have. And those hats and T-shirts, they're hopefully going to be replaced by NLDS champs and NLCS champs and World Series champs as we go down the road. But that's the thing. I... I <laughs> I like to celebrate things as we go because nothing is guaranteed beyond this point. Not a single damn thing. They might not pop bottles this 2024 team ever again. I think they're ready for October baseball, but stranger things have happened. We've seen 100-win teams get knocked out left and right, especially with the new postseason structure. So that can scare some people, but to me – it shows the importance of celebrating the things that the team does accomplish. And the NL East title is something that's worth celebrating. Uh, let's talk about the celebration for a second. I mean, my goodness, this team got after it last night. Garrett Stubbs doing his thing, a new DJ mix, by the way. So I, let me see if I can actually pull this up because they posted it out. I believe it was Alex Coffey, the Inquirer, posted um, Garrett Stubbs' new mix, and he used – so a local DJ or a local DJ group to go ahead and put it together. Uh, let's see. Yeah. The Armitani brothers, who are a local DJ trio here in Philly, uh, put together a bunch of remixes and stuff of songs. It sounded awesome in the locker room. I mean, there are a lot of great interviews going on, a lot of great stuff said by the Philadelphia Phillies. The celebration, too. If you did not see it last night, when Nick Castellanos recorded the final out on a fly ball, Carlos Estevez, Estevez shuts the door for the Philadelphia Phillies clinch of the NL East. It, it wasn't dogpile. It wasn't lose your mind. It was, okay, we're going to jump around behind the mound a little bit, but it felt more businesslike than that. It felt more focused than that. It didn't feel like mission accomplished. It felt like something accomplished. And that's important, right? There's a difference between those two things. Accomplishing something should be celebrated, but knowing that you have more on top of that that you want to reach kind of puts in the back of your mind, hey, let's not overdo this. This is not what we set out for. It's something. It's a step along the way, but this is not ultimately the goal. And if there was any doubt what the goal is for the Philadelphia Phillies, the owner set the tone. Normally, in locker room celebrations, when champagne is popped with this iteration of the Philadelphia Phillies, Rob Thompson hands things over to JT Romito, who will tell the guys how many more wins they need until they're hoisting the World Series trophy. But last night, he said, JT, you have the night off. And he brought in John Middleton, owner of the Philadelphia Phillies, the guy responsible for cutting all the checks to bring in all these star players to put this team in a position where they could be the best team in baseball when everything's all said and done. And John Middleton had a quote a while back that he was mocked for at the time where he was talking about the World Series trophy and he wants it back. And now, after everything he's done to bring in these guys and the money that he's paid and the way that he's acted and the favor that he's won with the fan base, it was viewed a much different way last night when John Middleton, to start off the party in the Phillies locker room, clubhouse, whatever you want to call it, 
said, I want my bleeping trophy back. It rings more true today because the Phillies, well, they have a bona fide chance to go get it. And they have the past two years, and I hope they accomplish that. But that was the tone setting. They did not set out in spring training to go, oh, we're just going to win the division. They set out to win the whole darn thing. And last night, they took a big step on that journey. They still have more steps to go, though. And we're going to talk about that later on in the episode. The biggest step in front of them, well, they got to find a way to play a baseball game at 6.40 p.m. today against those Chicago Cubs once again. And with that party going on and going to Xfinity Live after the bar across the street from the stadium, uh, they, they're going to be some tired, tired baseball players rolling into Citizens Bank Park today to get ready for the game. We'll talk about the uh, the hangover game coming up next as we continue today's episode of Lock on Phillies. First, though, I want to tell you about eBay Motors because they're the best. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also the one that's going to help keep your number one ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and leveled up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. You might be into speed. You might be into power. You might be into style. You might be into all three. Well, whatever it is, eBay Motors has you covered. They've got over 122 million parts for your vehicle, you're always going to find exactly what you're going to look for. You're always going to find it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. They got all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusive supply, eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Man, it is so awesome to see the Philadelphia Phillies as NL East champs. It, it really is. I can't get over it. I won't get over it for a long time. I'll probably have to get some of the gear, honestly. That, I don't know, because I do think they're going to play well in the postseason. I might hold off and I might get something on series they clinch or hopefully a World Series champion hat or shirt somewhere down the line. But you should be excited about this. And for anyone who doubted the Philadelphia Phillies, for all of those fans out there that were saying – Eh, this team is collapsing. They're not good enough. They're not going to win it. They're not going to find a way to the division title. They're chokers. They choke in October. They're going to choke in September this time. The Mets are going to catch them. The Braves are the better team. They just don't have it. Don't you feel silly now? Don't you feel dumb for not believing in this team? They always had the talent. They went through a tough stretch. They might not accomplish what they're set out, they set out to accomplish from here, and there's still a lot of work to be done. The hardest part is yet to come. But – there were people who believed this team wouldn't make the postseason, wouldn't win the division. I'm talking about Phillies fans. Folks, they accomplished that. And if you're so sure that it was not going to happen, wouldn't that naturally mean that you believe it's a difficult thing to do? And if it's a difficult thing to do and they accomplish it, doesn't that lead to celebration? That's how I view things. How the Philadelphia Phillies view things right now is probably, oh, what happened to my head? Because they're probably waking up. All right, about now or heading to the ballpark and saying, man, I am just my head's pounding right now. Brandon Marsh said last night they're not sleeping tonight. Rob Thompson said you're playing to the, uh, tomorrow, though. So not specifically to Brandon Marsh. But he said, yo, we got a game tomorrow. Come to the ballpark ready to roll here. Here's why. Right. And we're going to dive into the strategy with this later. But the Phillies now have a magic number of two to clinch a first round by. So what that means, it's built on the Brewers, the Phillies need to win one more game out of their final five, and the Brewers need to lose one more game out of their final five. Or the Phillies can win two, and the Brewers can win out. Either way, it's pretty much a certainty at this point that the Philadelphia Phillies are going to have the first round bye that they set out to. And they got a chance to do that today. Could you imagine another scenario for a magic number to get knocked off in consecutive days? That would feel amazing. So... How did they do it? Well, I, I I don't know how they're putting a team together today. I don't know who's going to be available, who's going to be out. I do imagine Rob Thompson will get some guys rest. I think that you're going to see Garrett Stubbs behind the plate, even though he's king of the party when the Philadelphia Phillies clinch anything. He's probably hurting today. He had like three beers in the front of his overalls that he was wearing, dowsing everybody who gave interviews and talked about anything last night. So uh, we'll see if he's <laughs> how he's feeling. But remember, uh, last year, 
Garrett Subs played in the hangover game after the Philadelphia Phillies clinched a postseason berth, and he went yard. So maybe, maybe that's the key to Garrett Stubbs' success. Who knows? We'll see if he's in the lineup. But you're going to have to play some of these guys. Some of the starters will have to go out there, and uh, we'll see how aggressive Rob Thompson is going to be. The pitching matchup is interesting in this one. Tanner Banks is going to the mound uh, to face off against Justin Steele. Justin Steele, a true starting pitcher. He's 5-5 five and five on the year with a 303 ERA. Tanner Banks, of course, is the lefty bullpen arm the Phillies acquired at the deadline. When you look at that, and he gets a start, you wonder, well, what are they going to do? Is Tanner Banks going to get an inning? Is he going to get two? Do they hope to get three out of him and extend him a little bit? Is it going to be a full bullpen game? Is it going to be, hey, we're going to try and get by not using some of our high leverage arms? Rob Thompson has talked about how he wants to get some of the lower leverage guys, the guys that you throw in in mop-up roles or stuff like that. He wants to get them high leverage experience because, God forbid, knock on wood, God forbid, but – the postseason is not like an injury-proof zone. What happens if one of your big arms has some type of issue in the postseason? What happens if one of those guys is not available and you have to go to maybe your sixth or seventh arm out of the bullpen and those guys haven't been in a pressure spot all year? You want to put them in those spots. So I think it's smart managing by Rob Thompson. Maybe we'll see that today if this game ends up being close. It's not pressure like the postseason, but high leverage spots are something that take getting used to and Rob's focusing on that. I also do want to look at – like what the Phillies offense does for the guys that are going to be playing in the postseason. Like not if you're starting some of the lesser guys on the roster, not lesser guys. I shouldn't say it that way because they're at all these champs, each and every one of them. But the you know what I'm saying, the role players, the depth players, I'm not going to be focused on them so much. But the starters that are starting today, I will still have my eye on them saying, yeah, OK, you guys might be a little hungover, but let's get ready for October. You got to find a way to that first round buy because the last thing you want is a division like this, a division title like this to go to waste in a wild card series. No, we're not doing that. We're getting that first round buy should be the mentality of the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, and Justin Steele, a lefty. This is kind of a game where you look at, you got two righties on either side who the Phillies face better in games one and three. I'm saying for the Cubs, uh, you knew it was the fifth spot in the rotation. You knew this was kind of a game that was going to be tough to win anyway. It's a perfect day for the hangover game. It's a perfect day to get a couple guys out of the lineup. And then you go ahead and get back after it on uh, Wednesday. And hopefully uh, you get in a situation where the Brewers drop a game. But uh, I, I don't know. How much can you honestly preview the hangover game? I know that's what it says here on the graphic. If you're not watching on YouTube, there's a graphic that shows the show rundown. That's why you should subscribe to the YouTube. So you can go ahead and see that over there. But um, I, I know it says previewing the hangover game. But – what I could say is I want to see the Phillies go out there, try and put good baseball together, but I understand if they don't for today. This is the one day out of the season that if the Phillies go out and absolutely stink, I won't care one bit. But it doesn't mean they're done, right? It doesn't mean they've – I talked about this multiple times throughout the show. It doesn't mean they've accomplished everything. We're celebrating, but, heck, I don't have to play a baseball game today. I don't think any of you guys out there do either, unless one of the Phillies are listening right now, and if you are, congrats on the NL East. Big fan of yours. Uh, but I, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Is that crazy that I, I wouldn't care because you're still trying to get that buy and it hasn't been settled yet? So can you give games away with only five remaining? Uh, you play Washington for the final three games of the season. So I think you could accidentally beat that team. I don't think you're going to be in a situation where you struggle to beat either the Cubs or the Nationals. But maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit too much. It's certainly possible. I did drink champagne myself last night, so maybe I'm still not in my right mind when it comes to that line of thinking. But uh, I would say that you could go ahead and afford a day where you don't put your best foot forward if you're the Phils. And, hey, this is a talented baseball team with a lot of depth. We've talked about the depth that this team has displayed all year long. Maybe they find a way to win it anyway. How great would that be? I forget. I think they won the hangover game last year. I think that's Stubbs' home run. It wasn't a walk-off, was it? But it might have been like a game winner or it might have been a go-ahead or something like that. Uh, bottom line, it can be done. People have played baseball hungover before. People have won the hangover games before. And the Philadelphia Phillies are capable of doing that today. So this is the most fun, light preview of any game of the 162 that we've had so far. It could get lighter if they clinch a top two seed. But here's where it gets interesting, right? Today's ball game. Kind of a wash, just like the locker room was kind of a wash last night, or probably needs one after last night, I should say. But how they handled things through the final five games 
but it gets a little interesting when you look at the standings. I'll talk about that coming up as we look at a strategy for heading into October the best possible way on today's episode of Locked on Phillies. Oh, yeah, but first, I got to tell you about Booking.com. They're the absolute best. So maybe you're looking at it and saying, hey, I want to go down to Washington to see the Philadelphia Phillies in their final series of the year. They're going down to the nation's capital. You want to celebrate the NL East champions before they go into the postseason. The ticket prices go through the roof. Heck, use Booking.com. They can help you explore those U.S. cities you always secretly want to learn more about, your rivals' cities. Washington's one of them. But it doesn't just have to be a baseball trip, right? Booking.com is good for everything. They can help you out with a whole bunch of different locations. It's so easy. They set everything up to make sure that you're getting the best possible deal and compare things like that. They do pretty much all the work for you on Booking.com. That's why it's the absolute best. And when you're going ahead and taking care of things on Booking.com, you can be confident that your stay is going to be comfortable, easy, you actually get to worry about vacation, which is not something to worry about, and not the travel or the stay. So that's why you got to check out Booking.com. I mean, the right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your baseball rival. So go ahead and check out Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, you can go on the site or download the Booking.com app for everything you need for your next big vacation. I also want to tell you about Fandle. If you went ahead and you bet the Philadelphia Phillies on FanDuel to win the NL East. Congrats today. You are waking up with a cashed ticket, my friend. There's a lot of ways to make money on FanDuel. It's not just baseball. NFL is ongoing right now. College sports, you've got a whole bunch of things. Basketball and hockey start soon. It's a great time of the sports calendar. So go ahead and check it out. Sometimes you don't get a feel before games. Sometimes you get a hunch in the middle of the game. Then on Fandle, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place bets. It makes it so easy to keep up with everything and also plan your next move. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead and check out Fandle, America's number one sports book, and go ahead and do it on Fandle.com. So here's what's interesting, right? With, and oh, sorry, thank you for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On MLB. Paul Francis Sullivan, Sully, he's the best. He's talking about baseball in general. This is what we're going to be talking about in this segment, but he does it for his whole show and he's knowledgeable about the whole league and keeps track of all the big storylines. They're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day and available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Check out the Locked On MLB podcast after you get done with our episode. But uh, speaking of that overarching MLB view, the Dodgers are a half game up on the Philadelphia Phillies. But here's the thing. You have the tiebreaker over them. And that's the top record in baseball, the Dodgers at 93 and 63. The only way they're a half game up is because they're a game less in the loss column. So could you catch the Dodgers? Conceivably, yes. Them rounding out with three against the Rockies makes it kind of hard. But they have three against the Padres. Who knows? You drop two or three against the 90-win Padres – who are looking at that, look at this, right? The Padres are 90 and 66. The Dodgers are 93 and 63. By my math, that would indicate a three-game difference in the National League West. Well, guess how many games they play? Three in L.A. Could you imagine if the Padres went in there and took all three, and then there's a match at the top of the NL uh, West, and uh, next thing you know, they're fighting out a division while the Philadelphia Phillies have their feet up yeah, that could happen. The Padres have been a darn good baseball team lately. The Phillies are rooting for the San Diego Padres in this series because they still want the one seed. Well, kind of. They want one of the top two seeds. Rob Thompson said last night that the division was a goal, that the postseason obviously was a goal, and that one of the top two seeds, that first round bye, was a goal, but not necessarily the one seed. Sounded like from what I was hearing from Rob Thompson yesterday, he's comfortable with being the two seed. And I don't know if that's right or wrong, right? Part of this also is do you play out 
the rest of the season and try and get the one seed? Do you rest guys, even if you know soon that you're going to have a second or a first round buy and you're going to get a week off? Do you play it through to keep them fresh? Do you or not fresh, but uh, to keep them from getting rusty? I should say. Do you rest guys to keep them healthy? Do you fight for the one seed, even if your manager's comfortable for the two seed? There's all this stuff going on. Here's basically the dueling thoughts, right? Because I don't have the correct opinion. Or not the correct opinion, right? I have my opinion. That's all I can have. I don't have the answer. I don't have a definitive. There are times where I'll tell you, like, I'm right on this. Listen to me. This is not one of those times. I'm conflicted. On one hand, I understand why just the first round buy is comfortable enough for the Philadelphia Phillies. If you face the Dodgers in the NLCS, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You got to be the better team anyway, whether the game's in Philadelphia or LA, whatever. You're going to get some home games in that series by that point. You will have rolled through one series already if you do get there. Like, I, I, I get that. I do understand that line of thinking. And I also understand the that Rob Thompson has been very, very cautious about his players and their health and making sure everyone's ready for October because he knows that if guys don't go down, you're not going to be able to be the same team in October. If you go in as the two seed, well, you're still as talented. You're just, you might have a tougher road based on how you play the games. But if you lose a player that's important to your team, it could change the whole outcome of the postseason run for the Philadelphia Phillies. And Rob Thompson is trying to avoid that. So that is the thought process on why, well, as long as you lock down the first round by, that's good enough. Go ahead and then put the guys on ice and we'll see you in a week, right? On the other hand, I know what's going to happen. I know that the Philadelphia Phillies are a good October baseball team. And I know that the Dodgers are a juggernaut out West too. These teams are pretty comparable. And I think the Phillies are the better team, but I think that would be a tight series if the NLCS indeed does become Dodgers Phillies. And if that's the case, and if the Phillies decide that they're good with the two seed and they basically lock down the two seed and forfeit the one seed to the Dodgers by saying we're going to rest some guys and we're going to throw give up lineups out there to make sure no one gets hurt right before October, knock on wood again, uh, then the Phillies are going to end up facing the Dodgers in the NLCS. And those first couple games are going to be out there in L.A. and everyone's going to lose their minds because they're going to think Rob Thompson played it wrong. Right. So do you think about that scenario and do you do it to appease the fan base? Because, you know, people are going to be annoyed if you're not the top seed. And frankly, I'll be slightly annoyed. Right. Like I know at that time how I'll be feeling, man, kind of wish these games were in Philly. Like I won't be mad at Rob Thompson because I understand both ways of thinking. But I do know there there will be a conversation if that does come up. So shouldn't that mean you go for it? What is the path of least risk? I believe the path of least risk is taking care of the players and making sure they're ready to go and making sure they're healthy. The Phillies have proved they can go on the road and win series in the postseason. They've done that. And this only applies if it's the Dodgers. The Dodgers have not had postseason success recently. There are some good teams in the National League. The Padres, the uh, – I don't know if I want to say the Mets, but they look good against the Phillies. The Mets are hot if they find their way into October. If the Braves find their way in, they found ways to win recently. I mean, the Diamondbacks are – uh, kind of on the outside looking in right now. We'll see if they find a way to make it into the postseason. Uh, the Brewers, like there are some good baseball teams in the National League. And of course, the Philadelphia Phillies, the best of the bunch, in my opinion. But if it's anybody else besides the Dodgers and you finish behind them in the standings, well, you don't have to worry about it. You got the home at LCS anyway. So it's this weird, might not even matter conversation, which is why I think it's more important to say health is definitely going to matter. So keep those guys safe. Keep those guys rested. Give the guys that want to get work in, work in. Give the guys that say, hey, man, I'm ready. We'll work on it in the week off. But my season's done, my regular season. Uh, give those guys the days that they need. And I think Rob Thompson has a good finger on the pulse of his team. Uh, let me know in the comments what you would do. Would you rather the Philadelphia Phillies chase down the one seed, play the season out, try and catch the Dodgers so that a potential NLCS matchup between the two teams would put them in Citizens Bank Park to start the series as opposed to Dodger Stadium? And also keep a look at the other side of the bracket to see if you'd have home field advantage in the World Series potentially. Or do you clinch the first round by, not worry about whether you're the one seed or the two seed, take care of your players, and go into the postseason as healthy and as rested as you could possibly be? 
Those are your two options. I'm picking the safer one, I think, but you can let me know if that makes me a coward or if that's a dumb way to go about things. What I do know is that from now until whenever the division is clinched next year, the NL East runs through the city of Philadelphia. The Phillies, for the first time in 13 years, are division champs. And man, I could not be happier or prouder of this team. Well, maybe a little bit, depending on what they do in the postseason. Long way still to go, folks, but a great accomplishment, a great moment, a great day, and a great episode of Locked On Phillies. Thank you so much for joining me for it. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Please make sure you're rating, reviewing, and subscribing to the YouTube, all that stuff that really helps us out. And I'll talk to you tomorrow on the next episode of Locked On NL East champion, Philadelphia Phillies.